Uh, so we, uh, you know, we're yeah. doing that, be able to do that. And at a uh, studio in West LA, we have some guests with Ben Montanch from the Heartbreakers is uh, play some keyboards uh -huh. on it. And uh, I think we have a few other people singing backups here and there. Finn, is that, do we have any other guests well, on that record? We, we, we have a, uh... What was his name? Steve from from uh, the Jayhawks and from. Oh right, right. Incredible. Wow, what a great line! All right, great playing uh, pedal steel. Pedal steel, well, yeah. Let's guys, let's do this on. So we ha we're going to start the show right now, mm -hmm. and we'll have. I'll probably have you do that all over again and give everybody the credit, proper credits, and talk okay, about the album. I just wanted to check a couple facts before we we went yeah. on air here. So again, right. this is recorded, but we are going to air this in Santa Barbara tonight. Um, and we're on 96.9 and AM 1290. So that will be on at nine o'clock tonight. The show uh, will be on. Right. Okay. You guys all ready? I guess <laughs> so. Okay. I thought we were already recording. So. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just was asking questions. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay. Here we go. All right. Uh, videos rolling audio in three, two, one. Welcome to the Jeremiah Show, Dr. D. How are you doing this week? Another great day, another great program ahead. Oh, my God. The guest that we're, we're getting on the show today is, I'm, I'm so honored to have them on. Yeah. What a band. You know, what, I haven't a, fainted yet, but if you ever get Adele. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually you play their music you're going to faint wait till we get to the break okay to play the music um it's all, not that often that we have the honor of introducing an international super band that started out right here in santa barbara cool john finseth greg brillier david heckhouse and clem burke comprised the quintet <clears throat> that broke from the santa barbara indie scene in isla vista way back in 1981 the Tearaways combined the influence of the British invasion with a California sound with a touch of the Ramones, the Clash, and Blondie thrown in to deliver incredible high-energy performances. To hear them is to feel young. To see them is to feel love. They are my favorite type of guests also, Dr. D. They come with gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All of the music you are going to hear on this show today are new completely new tearaway songs they have not debuted on radio or have not been released yet we're, we're you're getting the sneak peek and what a what a gift that is to to the listeners here and uh to the to the fans of the show and the fans of the tearaways we do love our listeners don't ever say we don't dr d and yes membership has its rewards i've never <laughs> said that but yes the Tearaways have played all over the U.S. and have performed in Europe for the last 13 years, including, Dr. D, your, your hometown there in Ireland and then Scotland, with a legion of fans over the years that include the likes of Tom Hanks, Pierce Morgan, Tom Green, members of the Beach Boys, the Colleen and Badfinger, and the list goes on. Those are the big names there, but they've got such a, a great fan base. Please help me welcome to the show, The Tearaways. Hey. And we have here... On the show, two of the uh, band members are here with us. John Finseth goes by Finn. I don't know if uh, can you can can we call you Finn? <laughs> and can I, what, hey, can I can I pass that into the phone now? Just kidding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with that, with that introduction, I'm about to pass out. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay, and Clem Burke, Clem, I I, mean, I don't want to get off start off the interview this way, but yeah, I've already gone down that path. So I just got to say. Long, long time ago, you you drum you play drums for the uh, Blondie, and I, a long time ago, Still I do. was a yeah, and I was a. I wonder yeah. if we met one time because, and tell me if you remember this, at the Enterprise Fish Company in Santa Barbara, you guys okay. came in after a tour or after the the bowl or right before, and we there was like twenty of you, and we put you in this long big table in the back, and uh, I was just so I was just thrilled because you kind of just walked in off the street, and you were all of you were there, but do you remember that? Kind of. It was probably a, a day off in Santa Barbara, I seem to recall. And we probably had a band crew dinner, which we uh, try to do occasionally when we're on the road, when we have a day off. But uh, I do remember uh, Enterprise Fish Company. I think, was there one down in uh, Santa Monica? Santa as Monica. Well, yeah, time? I was. Yeah. I ran that one, too, in my okay. younger days. I was the right. CEO. But anyway, okay. it was just a yeah, side yeah. path. Well, the ball's uh, a great venue to play. We always enjoy being there. And uh we played there with Blondie this uh, right before the pandemic in the summer, I guess, 20, 
19 with Elvis Costello and Blondie. We were on tour for a couple of months with, uh, with Elvis and his band. And uh, we did a show at the Bowl. And uh, so it was great. I remember when uh, it was a little funkier back when. Yeah, I think right. I, I played there with the Rhythmics in the 80s as well. It's a, it's a great venue, great, great place to play. Well, you probably know Moss Jacobs then, a friend. Oh, of yeah, Moss. Course. Yeah, and, yeah. And he did Moss, such a yeah. great job. You know, revitalize. Oh, that's right. He put that together. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I know Mount Moss for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so many good stories. But I wanted to start. I love that you guys started out playing in Isla Vista, and um, we've got listeners all around the world, just like you do. But I, I would like if you could, either one of you can take this, uh, fan yeah. or or Clem. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that scene then, because Isla Vista is is well known for as a party school. And anytime I've gone out there, you know, I've jumped on Bill's bus on accident a couple of times. <laughs> ended up in Isla Vista at 2 a.m. Yeah, Bill's, bus. Bill's bus. Yeah. It's just crazy well, I'll, out there. I'll, I'll, oh, that's I'll give you Finn's I'll, history there. So go ahead. Finn. Yeah, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the history of of uh, of the band sort of in that era. So. I was always the youngest guy in a band. So all the guys that I played with at the time were, you know, were a little older than me, three or four years older. So our very first gig we played, because I used to collect and I still do collect old vinyl albums. So I would go out to the swap meet, which is basically a swap meet. It was, ba- you, you know, that twin screen. Yeah, spot, yeah, right? I forgot about the swap meet. And uh, it used to be like a series of garage sales back then. So we'd buy records. So, Anyway, so I was buying my vinyl out there. So I said, you know, we need our first gig and we need an audience. Let's 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 rent a booth at the swap meet. So and we rented a booth at the swap meet and set up our gear. So we set up our gear. Our very very first gig was at the swap meet in front of you know twenty five hundred people that didn't realize you know <laughs> this surf band or whatever we were. We were called the Sharks then, and. Uh, so we got five songs off until this guy next to me said his pacemaker was about to go out. <laughs> so, so we, we, That's a good you know, quote. I didn't... stopped at five, five songs. But uh, anyway, you know, that was sort of the era where um, if they call, you know, we we're sort of a garage type band, kind of like the Standells type band. We didn't know how, what, you know, what we would be like. Yeah, but that was the era when uh, if somebody called you a garage band, it was like the worst insult ever. Now it's like the greatest compliment ever. Uh-huh. But back then that was like, no, we're not a garage band. I got all, <laughs> I got all the words to pipe out. You play in a pipeline. I, I got all those things memorized, you know, <laughs> even though that's instrumental. Um, but uh, so, so anyway, at that, at that time, there, there were like uh, this place on State Street called George's. I don't know if you remember that place. That was like playing in someone's kitchen. Uh-huh. Uh, but that was like 500 block of state. There was the Sh- Pat's Grass Shack out in Goleta and that was kind of like a cross between uh, Casablanca and Gilligan's Island in a nightclub <laughs> um, there was this guy everybody knows Larry like Toad the Wet Sprocket and all these different bands the Spoilers uh you know we are the Tan all these different bands would play the Shack um that was a great it was a great great place um and there seemed to be like this real unity um you know <laughs> out in Isla Vista there was Rudy's there was Dog Shit Park there was morning glory music turning yeah point, morning glory you know uh pizza bobs so we'd play you know those type places or we just go set up at a party on del playa yeah you know hey you know let's just keep, we have a carport and you would go do you get an outlet yeah okay just plug in the gear and go play <laughs> so it was it was very much uh and i that seemed to be a lot of camaraderie you know between the bands and uh we just all kind of, you know, do different things. And then there was this, uh, you know, Santa Barbara's going to take over the Troubadour. So we, it was like a sad Santa Barbara night at the Troubadour. I want to say it was like 1979. And uh, so we made these posters up. And it was funny. Uh, one of the posters is in this movie called Partners from 1980. The guy, Ryan O'Neill, is sitting next to this post. And there's the Santa Barbara Invasion poster just randomly which was actually pretty cool. So I think it was like um, the Pranks, Norman Allen, the Tan, the Tearaways, and a few other bands. You know, we all played the Troubadour when Troubadour. I we thought that was just the greatest thing ever. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, it was a great scene. You know, there was uh, castle music and uh, fancy music. 
and you could Richard, go in there. And Richard Fancy, your, right? Remember Richard. Fancy on stage? Yeah, I knew Richard. Richard was, was a <laughs> fancy music. Dude. In fact, my office is in Fancy Music's uh, exact spot right now. Okay, right by Dallas Garrett Plaza. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was just, you know, there was this, remember that Fiesta Street Dances on Cabrillo? Um, you know, it was just a, a really neat time. We're, I'm talking the scene right around 1980, 1981. You know, that's kind of, you know, my first gigs in a bar were like that. My first gig was with the spoilers at um, the shack. And I think I was 15. And uh, the guy, Larry, who owned it, again, he had this big beard and he would talk like this. And uh, he, he, said, he just walked up to me and said, little Johnny, if the pigs come in here, we've all had it. You know, and I'm 15. <laughs> Run okay. out the door. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it definitely was like a, a different type of joint, but turned out to be one of our favorites. And a lot of the Santa Barbara bands loved it because one, you couldn't play cover songs in there because you didn't pay his ass cat fees. So it had to be uh, all original music. Uh, so at that time, we, you know, we didn't have a full set of songs. Or we had maybe one set and you had to play three sets. So I remember one night somebody came up to me and goes, you played the same set four nights, four sets in a row. I go, isn't it great? <laughs> you know, because we you know, you only had like 10 originals or whatever. So we'd have to say, yeah, this next song we just wrote is called Twist and Shout, you know, or whatever. What but, was you know, that culture? It was like a surf culture. Was that, I mean, Santa Barbara surf, is surf yeah. culture, but even more back then from what I remember in those days is it, it was really kind of a surf culture. Like what type of music was, was really hot in town. And at that time that you guys were it was, forming and it playing. was, I mean, the thing that we knew in the, our very first band was called Dave wave and the swells. So we, we were smart in the beginning because we didn't know whether we could sing or not. So let's just be an intermet like a, you know, instrumental surf band. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's what we were for, a, a, you know, a few little gigs we played. But yeah, there was a surf thing. There was also that, um, I guess what they would call power pop or, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever at that time as well. Cause I think like 2020, uh, we played a gig with those guys. There used to be shows over there at the Com Galita community center. And actually, Moss Jacobs promoted quite a few shows around at that time as well. He had an office, you know, somewhere like Ortega and State Street, and mm -hmm. he drove a Volvo P1800 station wagon green. And we thought that was pretty cool because, you, know, <laughs> you know, we were, we, it, you know, it was all, it was just, it seemed, you know, to romanticize it, it seemed very, everybody seemed to be pretty supportive of one another. And nobody did exactly the same type thing. Like the Tan did their thing, Norman Allen did their thing the pranks did their thing you know all these different bands all had their kind of their own own scene of their own sound right so nobody really was emulating the same you know what was your same. sound at that point well we started off playing like songs like from the beatles at the star club so like you know hippie hippie shake you know uh, nothing shaking but the leaves on the tree you know you know arthur alexander we liked the b-side stuff mm -hmm. so that's what we started because we really love that type of music. So we said, let's go to the more of the roots of it. So that's where we kind of started with that. And I think it just kind of morphed into sort of, you know, a singing, oh, hey, we can kind of sing, I guess. And we, we kind of found our way. Um, and that's, just, that's sort of really what happened. And uh, um, I, I think we were lucky in our unluckiness because we're still here, you know? Right. Um, I mean, it's a term I like to use. We're lucky in our luckiness. You've but just grown the fan base. You just, you've, you're just steady and you're continuing to put out really, really great music. Again, I'm going to repeat that we are playing that you're sharing with our listeners with the show today. I'm so honored for that. Clem, how do you think your sound has changed over the years? Well, I'm relatively new to the band. I met uh, Finn and the rest of the guys through a guy called John Ferreter, who uh, was also in the band at one time. And, uh, they needed a drummer to uh, go to Liverpool to play at the Cavern during uh, Beatle Week. So uh, I was available. So I went and along to met? Liverpool. And basically, that's how we became connected. And uh, I've been in the band ever since. And that was how long ago, Finn? Four or five years ago now already, probably. That was uh, six years ago. 
Right. And, uh, you know, I had been aware of the band playing around Southern California and I was a fan of the band, but I've only been in the band for, as we mentioned, a couple of years. But uh, I think the sound of, has evolved quite a bit over the years. And, uh, you know, this new album that we've done is uh, was done very pretty much organically, everyone in the studio together and uh, kind of, uh, you know, the chemistry of the band is in play. And uh, really, that's what's going on. And when you hear the new music, you'll see how things maybe have evolved a bit since then. But uh, Zero Waste are a great band. We have a lot of fun playing. And uh, we did some great shows in uh, the UK. Uh, we were touring with this band, uh, Ryan, Ryan Hamilton. And uh, I forget the name of his band, but it's a guy called Ryan Hamilton. He was very helpful with us on a tour that we did uh, several years back and we played some great gigs. So we played the 100 Club in London. It was really fun. And uh, it's really good to, you know, travel around the, the country and around the world with the band and just everybody's, you know, on board and we all have a good time and everybody's great players. So it just keeps going. So yeah. originally it was, they needed a drummer and you were right. Cool. That's and, basically it. Yeah. And then you've, but you've stuck, you've, you're part of the band and you've stuck with it. What, what draws you to the, the the different band members that and the band and the sound well the music I, it's very enjoyable i uh, you know being a drummer i obviously i have to work with other people i can't just play a drum solo for an entire show can i i'd listen so to I, I need other thanks i need other musicians <laughs> and uh no they were a great we were on some, kind of have a lot of common denominators and in our influences as finn was mentioned about of course the beatles and british invasion in general and garage rock and things like that and the beach boys and it just kind of all uh, came together very uh, easily and it's been very enjoyable so far. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean, the first time I actually met Clem, which was actually kind of funny, was 1978 at the Whiskey A Go Go. <laughs> and uh, I was with a couple of the guys in the band and I, and I said to who I was sitting with, his name was John Ordazzo. We were at a Secret Affair show. And uh, they were. That's a band, yeah. Secret Affair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a it was a band, Secret Affair, uh, a mod band from uh, from UK. And I said, Ordaza, we got to get that guy in the band. <laughs> it only took forty years. <laughs> only took forty hey, years. You got to have goals, and at least you achieved them. Right. <laughs> yeah. That was. That was, I mean, that was just kind of funny how that you know how, how that kind of, things kind of happen sometimes. Just well, that's kind of. Great. That kind of goes back to us having similar influences, being the fact that we were both at that show for that relatively relatively obscure band uh, called Secret Affair. Great band, but uh, probably pretty obscure to most people. It's knowledge. Yep. Oh, you know, one of yeah. the things I love when I talk to, especially musicians such as yourself that have been in the business for so long, there's so much rich history there. I don't that I don't think. Um, a lot of people hear about be, uh, behind the music and behind their favorite bands, such as the Tearaways. And it's just, uh, it's to me, putting these stories out there and kind of connecting the dots is uh, really, I think, is fascinating. So I appreciate you guys sharing your stories. Finn, just yeah. the last question on Santa Barbara. How do you, did the Santa Barbara, because I don't think a lot of people think of Santa Barbara as a music town, although a lot of great people have come out of here or live here and make music here in Santa Barbara. Um, did you originally grow up in Santa Barbara your whole life or? Well, I moved here when I was nine years nine. old. Um, and uh, so, you know, that was, you know, the mid seventies. And uh, so I've been here since then. And uh, originally, I mean, I was from uh, an area called uh, North Dakota. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's seven people that live there. Um, seven. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, my my family wanted to get out of that cold, and uh, they just randomly picked Santa Barbara. And uh, anyway, so what my memory was coming to Santa Barbara, we were driving past Summerlin. This is like 19, mid 70s. My father says to me, you "No, know, son," and he points to Summerlin, and he, and I go, "Yes, Dad. See that area over there?" And I go, "Yeah, that's Summerlin." That's where all the dopers live. That's where the hippies are. <laughs> now you stay away Summer from there, you know. So it's like, okay, Dad. Okay, <laughs> but I gotta yeah. go check that out. <laughs> That'll like, make you more curious. That's right. It's like you stay away from that. You know, I bet, I bet, you know, that's like it's a great area. But anyway, it was just that was kind of like my that's my funny. introduction to Southern California was Summerland. 
Oh, we got to do a, we got to do a whole show on the memories of the what places were and and how the town has changed. Do you think do you think the city uh, has changed the sound or or affected the sound at all of the tearaways? Um, Is there a little bit of Santa Barbara in there somehow. I, Is I that possible? This, I, I think there's a surf thing. Uh huh. Um, that that always sort of underlying surf thing that just happens when you're in a beach community. So I do think there's that. I think. It just whether you know you don't even recognize it, but um, I just think that there is that little bit of that kind of Beach Boy kind of instrumental surf vibe. Like a lot of the some of the solos are almost could be surf solos and songs. So I'm not sure if it's because of being you know in this beach community, but it's possible. Well, the mm -hmm. harmonies. I, mean, I think of the bands that are from here. The yeah. harmonies of the band, you know, very reminiscent of. Uh, Sort of the surf sound a lot with the Beatles and yeah. as you mentioned in the, in the intro, the beat the Beach Boys and the Beatles kind of combine, which is a big part of the sound of the band in a lot of ways. So the harmonies I think are influenced by kind of the surf sound. Finn, wouldn't you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree, agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Well, it's neat to think that we have a sound here. So that's <laughs> got it on the record. Tell, can you take us? How did the band evolve? You guys have been a band for such a long time and um yeah can you take us through some of the major milestones of the band and um, how it evolved well yeah so i think when i when when i was born my parents didn't give me a blanket they put a leather jacket on me <laughs> you know so i was the only like you know infant with a leather jacket and it took me all those years to you know make it to santa barbara to find somebody else that had the same matching jacket um so we, we were always looking for the guy to fill the last jacket, right? Like, okay, who's going to wear it? So we always wanted to be in a band with people that, that we, the, initially, the, whether they could play or not didn't matter. We wanted people that wanted to hang out with us and like the same things and had the same interests, right? So, and that's really very difficult to find. So, um, but it started off that way. We all kind of like the same music and, you know, we would have different drummers. It seems like we've had like 38 drummers, you know, you know, but you know, in the uh, lifespan of the band, it was always kind of the, the spinal tap thing, you know, like, you know, why is that? We could never find the right match, but. Um, well, you've I think got such a legend. Have, I'm sorry. I don't want to. Uh, yeah. I mean, you embarrassed here, Clem, but I mean, you're such a legend drummer. It's just such an amazing talented <laughs> musician. Thanks. We're we're very very fortunate to to be able to play with with Clem and yeah. uh, I think he pulls the best out of us. Like you know when you can play with great people, it pulls the best out of everyone. And I think he definitely elevates what we do to a to another level. And uh, that's to his credit and and also a nice match of his style with what we do. Yeah. So um, I also think just the singing. I think what's kept us really together is sort of like how we can sing together, which is unique to what we what we do we knew that there was something special there so that's just sort of always kept it together and again i think you know we're just fortunate that we're that we still appreciate that and that we can do it and and we we want to i don't know i think our message is hey follow your passion of whatever you do and uh you know age is just a number and uh you know that's that old song saying and uh that keeps, you know, it's sort of like the blood keeps us going, right? It's the music is the blood that keeps us going. And well, we're about to, uh, I mean, if you're driving right now, maybe you want to pull over because we're about to play a new uh, song from the Tearaways. And we warned you in the beginning, you're going to probably faint. <laughs> so if you're on the freeway, pull over. This is, and this underscores what you're just saying there. And Saturday every day is the title of this song. And it's a, it's a fun song. It's great here. We're coming up. Uh, we're going to play that for you right now. Let me, before Richard cuts me off, when we play that music, go to tearaways.com. You can keep up with everything that they're doing, the band and the upcoming tours, the new album releases and all that fun stuff. Uh, tearaways.com. And here's what people are saying about the tearaways. Candace Marshall of Starlight Music Chronicles, Esquire, uh, says anthems and lullaby, lullabies every song packs a punch 
Tom Hanks even recalls, uh, I remember seeing the Tearaways at Shea Stadium. What a great band. <laughs> the Tearaways, uh, yeah. Tearaways.com. We'll be right back. All right, you're clear. Okay, coming back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, let me ask you real quick. Is the, is the Instagram that you have set up, is it the Tearaways USA, or is that a fan? Yeah, it that is be. you. Okay, I didn't want to put it out there until I verified that with you. Tearaway, yeah. uh, the underscore Tearaway. USA. Okay, cool. Stand by one second here. Slide this over. Okay, here we go. Put that into position. And three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. We have Santa Barbara, the boys from Santa Barbara <laughs> on this show, the Tearaways. They've been all around the world, but uh, they're still from Santa Barbara. Uh, Charlie, Keith, and Ringo. That's what we just came back with. And Clem, I got a Clem Burke uh, drums on that. Uh, man, that is a powerful driving beat i just love the drums uh, the work on that song you want to tell me a little bit about the we talked about it off air but let's talk about charlie keith and ringo and and the inspiration obviously for the song and a little bit about the music in the song well the song uh you know talks about three of my uh, biggest drumming heroes obviously charlie watts ringo star and keith moon I uh, was lucky enough to spend some time with Charlie uh, back in 2019. I spent the day with him up in Seattle. He was quite the gentleman. I had never met him before. And I, through a mutual friend, I was able to kind of hang out with him before the show and uh, go to the sound check. And it was very uh, memorable. And of course, in retrospect, you know, he soon died thereafter. And it's uh, mm. very emotional for me. And uh, Keith Moon, um, you know, he was... Uh, he was a rock and roll star. I mean, all three of them were. I mean, the thing about the Beatles were they were four rock and roll stars. It wasn't like the drummer was in the background, so to speak. You know, they all kind of stood out and they all made a contribution to the band that made them what they became. And uh, I'm always kind of uh, been uh, interested in that, you know, as far as, uh, you know, that old saying, give the drummer some. So I kind of put it that way when I go on stage and uh, you know, I draw inspiration from all three of those drummers and the band came up with some great music and lyrics that was very inspirational to my playing on the track. And uh, it really came together really well. And uh, Finn mentioned there's a great video to go along with it. And uh, yeah, thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's, uh, people should check that one out. It's really a fun song. Finn, what do you think of the yeah. song? It's such a, it is a, such a great song. It, and it really is, you're kind of front and center. Um, yeah throughout you know and is that the tribute that you're paying i mean how did you come up with that particular arrangement to pay tribute to your to your heroes is there a, um, can you even explain that the thing is really and maybe it's just sort of like cliche that song just kind of wrote itself you know now you know i had contributions you know mark Platt helped you know help me with the lyrical aspect of it and uh you know he's an unsung hero on, on this record but um it's uh again it really kind of really the, the old cliche just kind of really wrote itself and when we brought it to climb i mean what you hear is i think a one take i think that's one take live in the studio oh. so maybe it's two takes but i think we used the first take um and uh I, I don't know. I, I just, I sort of was thinking of like the stones right around, you know, get off my cloud or, or flowers. And, and then I, I thought, you know, the Beatles thing. And, uh, and then I thought, the, you know, the moon thing. And it just, it just, I, I don't know, just kind of really organically happened very fast, but the same as Clem, those are my three favorite drummers other than Clem, you know, uh, those are my three favorites. And, uh, just, does that happen often where a song almost writes itself or it seems like that it seems sometimes uh it, it does happen that way um i don't know why but it's almost like you're channeled you just you're just right doing it but you're going did i really uh you know is that somebody else's or whatever but yeah, that it happened really actually really happened pretty quick pretty quickly actually Let's talk about the new album. First, what, do you have a title for the album? Yeah, what? I think I'll call the record uh, For Our Next Trick. Okay. For yeah. Our Next Trick. 
for our next trick. I'm going to borrow yeah. that, Dr. D. Uh, for our next trick. And so there, I think you mentioned there are 11 songs in total today where you, you have yes. been gracious enough to share with your fans and, and our listeners on the radio here of five of those tracks that have yeah. not been released aside from um, uh, what the one we've been talking about, the uh, Charlie, um, Keith, Keith and Ringo. And Ringo. Yeah. 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 Um, but the, the other four have not been heard. And so tell us a little bit about the album, the process and some of the, the people that you worked with and how the album came together. Well, we recorded it uh, primarily at Village Recorders in West LA. And uh, they've been very gracious with their uh, availability for us during the pandemic. And uh, there's some great people over there. And uh, it's kind of like a very homey type of feeling, although it's uh -huh. a quite, quite a luxurious studio. Everyone from Fleetwood Mac to Tom Petty to Steely Dan is recorded there. It's, it's, it's very well known. And uh, we uh, recorded it during the pandemic, you know, and uh, we were able to get in there at various times over the last uh, 18 months or so. And uh, Finn, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, we wanted to try to do something radical and, uh, and that was play our instruments at the same time together in a studio. <laughs> so we, we, we were trying something completely different, uh, you know, and other you than know, rather than everybody uh, piecemeal okay especially, especially during the pandemic i mean i myself have been doing a lot of sessions just to files you know to computer yeah. files and uh, and that obviously that was uh kind of almost the state of the art before uh, the pandemic it just kind of uh was even more so during the pandemic but we took the chance and you know through uh safety protocol we were able to get into the studio and uh, and record and uh so you went the opposite way that most musicians during the pandemic. Went well, yeah, you could say that. Right. And uh, you know, Zoom the, or whatever. Right. Uh, the, chemi the chemistry of the band all in the studio at the same time kind of prevail prevails on the, on the recording, which is uh, what Finn was saying was a, a departure in some ways of everyone doing their parts separately or laying down a basic track. And the, I mean, there are overdubs and we have several guests on the album and uh, that were able to come in. One of whom was uh, the Ben Montench from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers a uh, few other people uh uh forget i wasn't there the guy from the jayhawks finn right played some uh pedals yeah. uh pedal steel and uh, and uh, actually uh we forgot to mention our great uh co-producer or producer ed stacy yeah. who uh, ed worked with us uh, through all of this and uh you know ed's uh, done everything from the ramones to uh band living color to um just an, an endless uh, recording career. Ed is is one of the one of the great uh, engineer producers out there, and uh, he was very helpful along the way as well. And uh, I think uh, Ed came to the band through my uh, connection originally, and then Finn approached him about his, uh, Ed working with us, and it was a perfect match. You know, the the music is just so so much. I, I don't want to use the word fun, but I'm like I get I got really. Um energized by it i was it was just it, it's it re, there's so much that's right. just that the, every in our everyday lives right now that's just down and this like brought me up to this level this great euphoric level um and it, it's interesting that you bring up in the uh that you that you came together let's play together we're gonna right. record and play it we're all gonna play together Whereas most people are like across the country, across the, the, the pond there and recording from their isolation that you can hear the sound. You can hear that energy that you have you guys having you guys playing together in the same room or in the same studio. Uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't, that's probably a big ingredient for, for why. Yeah. Well, you would think so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of portray what happens on stage in the studio uh, without the mistakes. <laughs> Why did you decide to do it that way? What was that inspiration, Finn? Was it, um, we're just tired of? Well, well so I long? think, one, I, I kept always hearing about these people recording their album in their closet. And, you know, so much of recording has become editing. It's not really performance-based. It's, it's called editing-based. You know, lots of, lots of, lots of editing, which I can appreciate as an art form. The editing is an art form. But I just, there's a couple things we thought we thought well we want to do a uk tour and we want to write an album that we can go play live and you know we can we'll sound not that we wouldn't sound like the record before but 
we wanted a great live sounding album to go play live. Really wanted to gear towards playing it live. Um, so that's one of the inspirations. The other thing is I've always sort of been one. I, I, I go back to a story. I went into Castle Music when I was 17 years old. And I remember this guy was the, the salesman at Castle Music. His name, I can't remember his name. But anyway, he said, Finn, you got to buy one of these. You got to buy one of these. And I go, why do I got, yeah, I forget. It was like, you know, some like 80s keyboard. And I say, why do I got to buy that? Everyone's using it. And I go, okay, um, can you show me what no one's using? I want to buy that. Whatever, whatever everyone's doing, I'm not going to do that. I want to do something different um, or try, you know, I mean, not that we're reinventing the wheel here. We're not really reinventing the wheel. We just wanted to capture, I think, even what people would see us live, I think the comment was, I've listened to your records and as they sound pretty and nice, you don't have this energy that I hear live. Can you try to capture that, you know, you know, in the studio? So I think, you know, hearing that kind of situation and really wanting to do something that most people I don't think really were doing that much of mm -hmm. was the inspiration. Plus we were a band. So it's like, Hey, look, we're not one guy trying to be a band himself. We're like, we are a band. Yeah. Let's the band play and record like a band. So, you know, well, I think that was. Yeah, it's welcome. It's It was welcome candy to my ears. I, I love it. And we're going to play another song right now when we take you to break real quickly. Easier done than said. And you guys have such a fun way of playing on words. <laughs> we'll be right yeah, back. Man. With the Tearaways. Um, before I let you go, though, check out tearaways.com or follow them on Instagram to keep up with these guys. They're everywhere. The underscore Tearaways USA. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we have just a few minutes. What do we got left, Richard? Dr. D. We got, we got, you know what? What do we got to do the show to finish out your show, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right, all right. So, I mean, I'm assuming you're you're gonna you're gonna end the show with "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yeah, yeah, we're playing it in its entirety <laughs> for you. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want to believe how many times I had to bleep <laughs> that song? I was just unbelievable. <laughs> I, I ran out of bleep audio. I had to go buy more. <laughs> okay, I like, I like bleep audio. I like it. Hey. All right, here we go. Yeah, uh, we we we. That's make, such a good song to end with, too. It really it's just, is. It's, a, it's just so you know, like I, people tonight in their cars will be uh, having a lot of fun with that. Yes, one. they will. Cheer yes, they will. Here you go, kids. <laughs> Probably gonna keep them up all night. Oh, They're prompt. gonna get too much adrenaline going. Too much going. All right, here we go. <laughs> right. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the show. We are uh, the Tearaways are with us today. And it's such an honor. These started out in Santa Barbara in 1981, playing out of Isla Vista. In fact, you said the swap meet. That's the, if I can recall, that was the old drive-in theater, right? During the week. And then, yeah, uh, yeah. I've got on the show. Uh, so the special guests today joining us are John Finseth. Uh, he's allowing us to call him Finn, like, the, like his brothers in the band. And Clem Burke. They're talking about the new album that's coming out in spring. <laughs> The spring, we're thinking late spring. It'll late. be, it'll be. And give me the title one more time. Put this, uh, put this in your notes, everybody, and when this becomes available. Okay. And for our next trick, <laughs> there's going to be a picture of a hooker on the cover, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me talk about. Um, there was a, the single "Hell of a Christmas" was a breakout holiday rock um, yeah. uh, song on our ad on Spotify. Yeah. Uh, I hate to uh, just, but I have, I've got you on. I got to ask, what are your thoughts on what's happening on Spotify right now? And do you think it will affect other streaming services that you've got your music on or other, you know, that other people where people get their music, you know, because of the Joe Rogan comments or right. artists. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting. Young. It's interesting how many people are joining uh, Neil and his boycott of Spotify. Now I was reading the, the Spotify kind of, uh, by coincidence, you reunited Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, apparently, because they're all behind Neil now, apparently on boycotting uh, huh. Spotify. It's a it's a crazy time for, you know, there's so many plat streaming platforms. They're all in competition. And, you know, all the all the cash that was handed over to the three majors uh, via Spotify and the, how that's distribution is going to work and, uh, you know, distributing that money to the 
to the bands, to the, to the musicians. And uh, it's, it's controversial and it continues to be controversial. And so we'll see how it plays out. I don't know. What do you think, Finn? I mean, the, all I know is that we can just know that there's always change, right? Mm -hmm. Always going to be, it seems like there's always change. Um, but I'm sort of, I don't really have an opinion of it. I'm just kind of, I, I've always said this. I'm kind of like a guy in a train. I'm just kind of reporting what I see out the windows, mm -hmm. you know? It, it seem, go ahead. Yeah. It, just, uh, it, it seems to be, uh, there's a wave of uh, corporate uh, music companies being a little more artist friendly and uh, trying to make some changes as far as uh, I just saw that. I don't know if you saw Warner Brothers is uh, forgiving all the, uh, all their um, advances that people that, aren't recouped uh, all these heritage artists, they're gonna, gonna forgive the uh, debt as it can uh, wipe that clean, which is pretty extraordinary. And, uh, and they're talking about distributing uh, their, uh, I think maybe Universal's talking about distributing their uh, uh, share of uh, the stock, their sale of their Spotify stock to the artists. Oh, that'd See what be happens. Great. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of, seems well, like it's moving a little towards more artist friendly as the, yeah things move on maybe it's interesting how the time changes and you guys have been a part of it you've seen so much change oh yeah uh, i mean the business has changed all oh yeah no it's upside down now i yeah. mean it's a, it's a cliche the the record the recording that the tour was always to up it's been said before the tour was to publicize the record and the cash was in the record sales. Now it's kind of completely opposite. You know, the, when you put out the record, you, you just want people to know that the band is uh, still vi uh, viable and still making new music. And then, you know, backs it up with the touring, which is the, which is uh, represent the, it's and kind of like the record's kind of a, a, an advertisement for the band in a way. Now it's right. the media thing, doing things like this, you know. And what is the best way? I always try to get this out for the listener and what I've, you know, you tell me if it's different, but what's the best way for most of the money to get to the band and to the people that create the art and the music that we love. I know that if you, you know, uh, a lot of different platforms at streaming, you don't really make much what 1.5% uh, of every time it streams, yeah. it. but well, the, nowadays, uh, the band camp, that's the best, the most goes yeah, that, yeah, the ghost. Yeah. That sort of thing. But I mean, all this different, so many different, uh, revenue streams that can be uh, established you know, with license i mean with the music itself like licensing mm -hmm. you know to film i mean to ads before that was all kind of taboo that now it's commonplace but the you know the pandemic really drew a line in the sand because most musicians you know that's how they made their living going out and performing and then for that to stop it really kind of illustrated the uh dichotomy between recording artists and the touring artists and you know it hopefully we're going to get back to uh being able to go out and play live more often again yeah yeah no i, I hope that yeah. too for for you yeah. and for everybody yeah we all need it you know music yeah. is our our social glue our bond and our and lifts our spirits and it gives sure. us hope and it you know it does so much more to soundtrack to our lives um just to finish up we've got to take one last break here uh just to Joni mitchell i know followed neil young and then there's rumors that foo fighters barry manlow uh, may join it, but uh, this I thought was interesting. Spotify lost four billion dollars in market value on, right. uh, over that, so incredible. We we're yeah, talking it's, about, it's incredible, incredible. We're talking oh. about the Tearaways, um, Clem Burke, and uh, we've also got uh, John Finseth uh, going by Finn for for us for today. Thank you, John, for letting us be a part of the club. And we have Smokey you. Robinson here too. Smokey <laughs> Shepherd Ferry. Uh, painting of Smokey Robertson back there. Killer. Oh, beautiful. Behind yeah. you there, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're these, uh, radio listeners were, Clem's pointing out a, a beautiful painting behind him. You can see that yeah, on the, a, the YouTube uh, interview. Right. Um, we're going to take you to break right now with another great title. I've known so many women like this, married and single. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay. Uh, all right, we got just a few minutes, guys, and I'll let you go. Um, yeah. Let's see, what do I got here? Just make sure I, I've got everything in here. Anything that I'm missing that you want to point out? Um, uh, let's see. I think you're covering a lot of it. I mean, 
you know, pointing it to the website is a good idea. And then just letting them know from the website, where, you know, or, or our uh, Facebook page, um, you know, where our shows are going to be when we start to, you know, start On the to Facebook play. pages where you put those? Okay. Yeah. Great. We'll do okay. that. All right. Ready Here we go. Final segment in three, two, one. Welcome back to the Jeremiah Show. we got the Tearaways on today. Uh, Finn and Clem are, have joined us from the band. Um, so you want to be a rock and roll star. That's a song uh, made famous. Good song. Birds. Yeah, Chris Hellman's a good friend of our, the show. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I saw Chris at, uh, believe it or not, I was at Buck Owens funeral in Bakersfield oh. a while back. I'm a big Buck Owens fan. And then Chris performed at the uh, at the service. It was great. Yeah. I saw him uh, live a few months ago. He was he just great, just really great when he you know telling stories from his book. He has a book out now, right? Yeah, yeah it just came yeah. out. I saw it just came out. I think I saw something in another magazine. A big, uh, I think maybe Ventura magazine or something has a big article about him right now. Yeah, he's uh, the book is great. It's been uh, I guess it's been more than they ever thought. You know, it, sure, it was, uh, sold better than they thought. Um, so anyway, you so you want to be a rock and roll star? These rock and roll the kids in Isla Vista right now, then uh, the, yeah. the UK, wherever in London and uh, you know, all yeah. these neighborhoods that they want to become rock and roll stars. What would you quick advice that you could give, give them each from each of you? Well, uh, one of my inspirations is a drummer called Hal Blaine. And he has a, he was a kind of a joke teller. He said, uh, this woman came up to him and said, uh, how my, uh, my son wants to be a drummer. Uh, what should we do? And Hal said, you should cut his hands off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's one end of the, that's one end of the spectrum. You know, you got, you got, you know, you got to believe in yourself. If you want to do it, you're not doing it for anything other than your, uh, you know, you're following your muse, you know, it's, and who knows where it's going to lead, but you know, it's great to play music. It's really uh, like, you know, I think Keith Richards said, you know, it's music is like oxygen, you know, you need it you to do. live. So Anyway, Finn, what do you think? <laughs> I hope it's not so violent. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I would just say to them, you should do what you want to do with it and have no um, expectation <clears throat> other than your own enjoyment of whatever you're doing. Don't, don't have an expectation of what somebody else thinks other than you and the guys in the, you know, if you're in a band or if you're a soloist, I would, I would just say, you need to do it for yourself and you be happy. And as long as you're doing that and not an expectation, I think, you know, you're never going to be let down really, you know, that's mm -hmm. personally uh, what I would tell someone. Proudest moments for you guys individually and as a band. Well, for me, um, playing at the cavern with the territories was definitely a, uh, Oh, wow. It's a high point. Now I want yeah. uh, they um, they have a little ritual over there where they uh, across the street on Matthew Street they um, take certain people's names and they inscribe them on a brick and they put it in the wall. And I was one of the people that did receive one of those while we were there with the tearaways, and uh, that was something uh, extraordinary for me. And uh, the whole connection with Liverpool and the tearaways is is really strong. We have a lot of friends there, a lot of supporters for the band there and we always have a great time being there so playing in liverpool is always amazing so that was a high point is there film on that show out there? uh there, well there, there's actually a, there's a documentary about me that uh a sky art sky arts in the uk uh, produced and uh it's been shown in the uk several times and uh the tearaways are in it of a, and it shows us at the cavern playing and being in Liverpool and things like that. So it's out there. Bits and pieces of it, of it are on YouTube. We, we never managed to get it uh, on, a, on a platform streaming service in the States yet, but it might happen next year. What's the name of the doc so we can send your It's your called uh, My View, Clemberg, My, My View. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's fun. It's a good documentary. And uh, our friend, John Ferreta, who also managed the band uh, was instrumental in putting that together for me back when yeah. check it out Dan, yeah. how about you um I, my connection is probably the same as Clems. it's liverpool we were playing uh, with joey from uh, badfinger one of the original members mm. and we're 
this place called the uh, Philharmonic in uh, Liverpool, their big theater, pretty big theater. So we're playing with him and there's a break where they say, okay, we want to give away, we want to give this award to blah, blah, blah. So we, all of us in the band backed up because we figured they were going to give, you know, Joey from Badfinger an award. So they walk over and Joey's about to receive their award and they go, no, not you. <laughs> they say, I mean, which is kind of weird, like, right? Because we're used to like, always being somebody else. I mean, it's like, uh -oh. oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, oh, come yeah. here for you. And I'm looking at Joey and Joey's confused going, huh? Okay. So they, they uh, gave us this award of being uh, their hall of fame, you know, for their, their, uh, their thing that they've done for the last 35 years there in Liverpool, which is called this Beatle Week kind of international thing. And I would encourage anybody that just likes music, it usually happens in the, the last 10 days of August to go there. It will be the greatest trip you've ever, one, probably you, you know, it'll change your life really. If you like music, it'll definitely change. Um, but I'd say that's a pretty proud moment. Um, Either that or like, I think Robert Hilburn wrote something on us, you know, giving us, you know, some good songwriting uh, kudos on a song we wrote called Jessica something. So I think those two moments, you know, just not really in our control that somebody like Hilburn would say, this is a really great song. That's that meant, you know, that meant a lot to us as artists and uh, that somebody's listening. Yeah. Well, guys, we're going to, uh, have to say goodbye here it's been such a, a great hour with you really really thank you so much for joining us and doing the show with us today um yeah. we're going to premiere right now your your newest single on your upcoming album can you <laughs> let's see if uh, I've, how, do you want to believe me dr d or give us the title and tell us a little bit about the song if you could before <laughs> before we say goodbye blank kidding me how about that are you F blank kidding me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did, did it really well. We didn't get any we, FCC fines or anything. None at all. Tell us a little bit about the song and the single, what, what they're going to hear and set it up for us, if you will. Um, clearly, um, initially, it was obviously written during the pandemic when I, when, uh, I was sequestered on a, up in San Inez on this ranch by myself. And, uh, you know, it was just everything I was looking at, everything I was thinking about, um, I just kept saying that to myself. And I noticed everybody around me who I would speak to would always be saying that. <laughs> thing. So I thought, you know what? It's time we're gonna write a song. So Mark and I, you know, via phone call, got together and uh, initially, that's again, that song was written in three, three and a half, four minutes, literally it was written. <laughs> um, oh. it just, oh, and then, I brought it to the guys and then Clem just went, I know what to do with that. And, and it was immediate. Um, when Ben Montanch came in again, he said, I know, you know, it was just, it just seemed like it didn't require much direction. It's, it, you know, the word spoke for itself and it just, that's what right. I, I love that so much. It's a very honest song. Yeah, it's about effing time. Somebody put out a song <laughs> like this. <laughs> Darn right. Yeah. All right, Clem, you got any final words for your fans or anybody out there? Yeah, just peace and love to everyone. Stay love. healthy. Be well. Finn? Stop, stop the hate. Yeah. Yes, the, please. Right. Let's all try to come together and appreciate our differences instead of fight about them. All right. That's perfect. Perfect. Final words. Tearaways.com. Keep up with them. There's an upcoming album out and a tour. Uh, this year, hopefully, the underscore yeah. Tearaways USA on Instagram, and uh, you have we've we've teased you long enough. Here it is, the world premiere on the radio. Here, are you effing kidding me? By the Tearaways. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Bye. You. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. All right, we're clear. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Oh, wait, hold on one Bye. second. Can no. we get a? We, we lost him. Oh. Hey.